Part 4 of the Sermon for the Feast of St. Anthony of Padua by the celebrated Jesuit Father Antonio Vieira. If Anthony was the light of the world, how could he not leave his homeland? He had to. This was the second movement of the light. He left as the light of the world, and he left as a Portuguese. Without leaving, no one can truly be great. Go forth from your country, said God to the father of faith, and I will make you a great nation. He left to be great, and because he was great, he left. On the fifth day of creation, God created birds and fish in the element of water. But what did they do? The fish, being cold and without wings, stayed where they were born. The birds, being spirited and generous, changed their element. Thus did the great spirit of Anthony, and thus he was obliged to do so because he was born Portuguese. Now think you, how many young men refused to consider the service of God because they could not fathom leaving their homeland and family. Something I have long pondered is the true uses Christ made of the thirty pieces of silver for which he was sold. The first use was to buy a field for the burial of strangers and foreigners, as is stated in Matthew 27, verse 7. The second use of these thirty pieces of silver, I like to believe, was to enamel the shield of the arms of Portugal. From the price with which I redeemed humanity and was bought by the Jews, you shall compose your insignia. And what a remarkable purchase it was! And what proportion does the shield of Portugal have with the burial of strangers? that the price of one should be the enamel of the other. Great proportion. Christ desired that the price of the burial of strangers to be the enamel of the Portuguese arms, so that we would understand that the coat of arms of being born Portuguese was the obligation to die a pilgrim. With these arms, Christ bound the Portuguese to pilgrimage and with the burial. He committed us to die. But if he gave us the coat of arms that would take us from our homeland, he also gave us the land that which cover us outside of it. To be born small and die great is to become a man. Therefore, God gave us so little land for birth and so many lands for burial. For birth, little land, for death, all the earth. For birth, Portugal, for death, the world. Ask your ancestors how many left and how few returned, but these are the bones your blood should most prize. This obligation to leave the homeland is based on the duty to be the light of the world. How could St. Anthony have been the light of France and Italy if he had not left Portugal? For Abraham to bring faith to Palestine, he had to leave Chaldea. For Christ to overthrow the idols of Egypt, he had to leave Nazareth. Both exiles from their homeland, but both as light banishing darkness. Faith cannot be planted without transplanting those who sow it. Not in vain did Christ say, My father is the husbandman. God treated the Portuguese as a farmer of lights. The farmer sows in little land what he later spreads in much. Portugal was a small land, but there God made a seminary of light to transplant it across the world. God created light on the first day. The second day passed, and the third day passed, and on the fourth day, dividing that same light he had created, he formed the sun, the moon, and the stars, and distributed them across the firmament. I ask, and why did God not form these planets, these stars, these signs, and these constellations on the very first day, but later? The mystery was, according to St. Basil, because the supreme artist of the universe wanted to outline in the sketch of nature the plan he would follow in the works of grace. 
This is what we see in the conversion of the new world. Just as God first created material light in one place, then spread it from there across all the regions of the sky and all the regions of the earth, some stars to Arctic Pole, others to the Antarctic, some to the north, others to the south, some to the east, others to the west, so to illuminate the new world, which for so many centuries had been in darkness, unknown to men and without knowledge of the true God, what did the author of grace do? He first created and kept separate in Portugal that chosen seminary of faith and light, so that from there, divided and distributed in due time, some lights would illuminate Africa, others Asia, others America, some to Brazil, others to Ethiopia, others to India, others to Mughal, others to Japan, others to China. And in this way, transplanted from Portugal, faith would be planted in the three parts of the world. It is true that Portugal was a corner or a small garden of Europe, but in this corner of pure and beloved land by God, heaven chose to deposit the faith that would spread from there to all these vast lands, introduced with such valor, cultivated with such labor, watered with so much blood, gathered with so much sweat, and finally stored in the barns of the church under the keys of Peter with such glory, measuring itself against itself, and recognizing itself so small in the face of such an immense enterprise, Portugal could say what Jeremiah said when God chose him as a prophet to the nations. And I appointed you a prophet to the nations. And what did Jeremiah say? Ah, 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 Lord, God, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. Ah, 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 my God, where are you sending me? I am too small for such a great enterprise. Portugal could say the same. But God, taking these three R from his mouth, wrote on the first, A, Africa, on the second, A, Asia, on the third, A, America, subjecting all three to his empire, as Lord and to his doctrine as light. Vos esti lux mundi. Be sure to join us tomorrow for the next part. St. Anthony of Padua, pray for us. St. Anthony of Lisbon, pray for us. May God bless you for your generosity.